Hey guys, so we're just going to be doing another video on the Freelander again. Uh, so we're going to be doing the oil separator. Um, so this is uh, considered a sort of mod of sorts. So it's upgrading it to one of these, which is uh, a sort of BMW part number, sort of a psychonic unit, I think. Um, so the Freelander standard has like a, a foam filter. Uh, I haven't actually taken it apart yet. I don't actually know what's in there, whether someone's already done this or not. Uh, but I haven't actually been in, I haven't actually looked. I've had the car for sort of two and a half years now. Um, so, you know, they, they do say, that although these are fit and forget parts, um, you, know, you should really sort of service them every two years and have them touched in like two and a half. So, um, I think it's best to sort of start again. Um, but again, uh, APD were happy enough to send this out. So, uh, a huge thank you to them. I'll continue to support the, the channel from those guys. Um, I'll get the link to that one up on the, on the, in the description below. Uh, as well as a couple of nice cheeky discount codes for you guys. Uh, so the first part is going to be to get the bonnet up and sort of just finding where it goes. I think I have an idea of where it goes. Um, but it's just going to get those top engine covers off. So uh, yeah, huge thank you for APD for sending this one out. Uh, it does come with all the uh, sort of O-rings and seals, which I think probably it's best to sort of change these anyway every now and again. So it's good to just sort of start again, even if it has had this done before. Um, so yeah, huge thank you to APD and let's pack on and get this one done. So I believe it's under here. Uh, so I'm just going to start by taking those bolts out. This is what we can see here and this looks like the box where we're going to be putting the filter in. Uh, so it looks like the first step is these three bolts here just to move this rail up out the way a little bit. Uh, and then you've got uh, one there and one back there to take out. Uh, so yeah, we'll do it as we go through and see what happens. But yeah, first to take these off. Uh, I'm getting a 5mm socket on those. Uh, it looks like they're sort of torque splits, but the 5mm actually, because they're so weak, just does them on quite easily. So let's get those off and see where we can get from there. Okay, yeah, so now we've got that off, you can basically just lift it up out of the way uh, and you've got those down in there. Uh, let's see what fits in those and get those out. Okay, so we're just going to quickly uh, whip this top cover off just because it's going to make it a bit easier to get to that bolt in there. Okay, so we've got all that up out of the way now, so we've got a bit easier access to here. Now the bolts are holding that in, are actually the same sort of Allen style bolts that went into these. Um, so, in theory... So you bolt that side, a bolt at the back, and you have actually got a bolt at the front as well. Okay, so this is the, the lid once it's off, so that it was down in sort of that orientation into the engine. So if we're looking at the engine, it was kind of like that. Uh, so this is, say, the front of it. So you've got bolt, 
bolt, bolt, bolt. And it looks like on that one the shims come out, so I might have to sort of tap or glue that back in. Uh, but that's kind of what it looks like. I'm probably gonna have to clean this out quite a bit. And it does look like, if I pause this, so down inside there, there you can see, it does look like it's got the cyclonic unit in there, but it is very dirty. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of muck in there. So um, I'm gonna clean all that up as best as I can um, and then get the new unit in there and see how this one looks against the old one as well. So yeah, let's get that one out and clean it all up and see what we can get on with. to help take them out as well which is good. okay so looking at these now here's the old here's the new uh, immediately I can tell the holes on this one here um, are much neater and drilled out but better these ones is just like a plastic hole through um, this one seems to have actually you know a more purposeful hole in it uh, it has a bit more of an accreditation up here as well this doesn't seem to have a brand on it um, and then also when we're looking down through here you can see quite a big difference if I show that bit there, the holes, compared to that one where they are huge. So whether you know how that will affect performance, I, I don't know whether it would, how it would affect breathing. I mean, I'd, I'd imagine you wouldn't want it too big because you're going to get all the crud going through there. Um, but that's sort of some of the notice differences I'm noticing. This one feels a bit more uh, less sort of cheap. You know, it's, it's a bit more solid. This one feels a bit sort of plasticky, but bit thin um, so yeah nice uh, hopefully this will be a nice little upgrade so get this get those o-rings back in uh, and see how it goes okay so here you go so there's the camera focusing so the little uh, round o-ring looks to be that one there so we'll get the new one in there first we'll get the other o-rings in that housing and then we'll put the new cyclonic filter in there and Hopefully that would be a little bit cleaner for the engine. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking with that other one having the bigger holes on it, etc. It was letting quite a bit of crud through. Uh, so I'm hoping this is going to help clean everything up a little bit. Okay, so when putting the new one on, it is just a case of putting it on and then just rolling it round and then letting it bed down. You run your nails around it until it sort of beds down on that lower groove. You don't want it to sort of sit up on the top one. Um, there we go so i've got that in now so it's running around that outer groove you don't want it to sort of just sit on top you want to sort of like say feed your nails around until it sort of sits nicely and beds down properly on that top of the housing there okay so this is the sort of first o-ring uh luckily this bit is quite well formed in it so i'll show you how i'm going to get this one in. Okay, so what i've done is i've got that top bit where the groove was in that same shape bit there and then the rest will just push down in as you go around so get that sort of top bit in first there and then the rest will just push down with it and sort of conform to the rest of that thing. Uh, it'll be the same for that one. I'll probably choose the corner bit in the top there and then just work my way around it. Okay, so that's them both back in there, uh, nicely sort of down in the groove. So what you'll see is there's like a groove for them to go into. That one was a bit more awkward, took a bit more persuading to get down, but went down easy enough in the end. Um, so that's both of the o-rings back on and the new o-ring on the uh, lid. So now she's getting the cyclonic filter in and putting the lid back on. Okay, so luckily this is shaped, so this will only go in one way, and that's with this notch pointing towards the back of the car. Uh, and there's like a rod for it to go down onto there, which will go into the hole in the middle there, I presume. Uh, Ta-da! Right, lid back on and screwed down and we're done. Okay, so just as an installation note, um, this line here, your um, inject line, gets really in the way. So I've unplugged it can't see my screen from this injector here uh, you just push in that little uh, prong you see there and it pulls up out uh, that gives me enough room to get this cable up on top of this and then when you're getting it in it's a bit awkward not gonna lie um, you kind of have to come in at an angle and then 
out or down. Um, it's not the easiest. Um, move that out of the way. Uh, trying to do it with one hand now. So, see how I sort of rotated it down in on itself? And then it just slides down in. Um, hopefully that was clear on the video, but you kind of get the bottom in here and drop it down in on top. And then once you're done with that, you could drop this line back down and plug that back in again, you know, down here. You could sort of drop that down. But I'm going to get these bolts in first, whilst everything's up out of the way, and then drop that down and we're done. Okay, so that's it back in. Just gonna push that down and plug that back into the injector there. So that's plugged back in there. I didn't really touch this one, so that one's fine. So yeah, bit difficult getting that back in again, I must admit, that's probably the most awkward bit of it. But once you've got that bit done, it's just gonna be getting these, these bolts back on, covers back on, and you're done. So let's get that done. Okay, so there's that one done. Uh, it wasn't a particularly messy job, got a bit of my hands, but I was kept the white shirt clean. Um, really easy, actually, in fairness. I think once you figured out that, little, well, once I figured out that little trick of just moving that injector wire out the way, um, I think if the other one that was on the far left, that injector would come out a bit easier, it would have been even easier. Uh, but even just getting that one out and just getting that uh, line up on top of that bolt hole bit, just so I can get the leverage to get it in there, twist it in. Uh, made it a lot easier once I figured that out. So I think knowing that kind of knowledge now, it's probably a 10, 15 minute job. It's quite easy to do. Uh, the hardest thing was actually getting the airbox cover back on. So I cannot wait to get rid of that one day. Um, see if it works. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, really easy job. Glad I did it. The old one definitely looked cheaper and I wasn't really happy with the size of those holes as well. It's a bit weird that they were so big. Um, because that to me just seems like it's got a chuckle of thicker gunk through it. So, uh, yeah, glad I went with this new one. Huge thank you to APD for getting that uh, out to me and letting me do this video. Uh, lucky I've had the nice weather for it as well. We've started to have the weather turn now. So, yeah, really good job all in all. Hope you just help the engine breathe a little bit better without so much oil flowing through the pipes anymore. Um, so, yeah, there you go, guys. Hopefully it helps you guys out and lets you do the mod as well.